Big Sills! As I used to say back in the day, it's time to stop lipping and start hitting. This game on Sunday between the 49ers and the Eagles, this thing's good, man. This thing's good. I I, I am prepared for this. I like the shit talking that's going on between the two. A.J. Brown's now telling all Eagle fans, Eagle fans, Eagle fans, you're on alert. Troll Debo Samuel. Who absolutely called, what did he call? James Bradbury trash. Holy shit. This thing like a college football rivalry. It totally, it, it, this is exactly what you want. Nat, thank you very much, man. That's really cool of you. Appreciate you coming aboard here. I know many of you have a ton of options to choose from each and every single day, but you choose to come here. By the way, you're three-point underdogs now in some houses. Woo! How are you a three-point underdog in your 10 and 1? I you're you you've just gone through some of the best teams in the NFL and best quarterbacks, and you're a three-point dog. How's that possible? I don't know if I've ever seen that. Okay. They interviewed Debo and asked if he would change his words about Bradbury. And he says, I regret nothing I said. F you, brother. I don't care. You're trash. Man, I love this shit. I think it takes a lot of Stundines and a lot of cannolis. Okay? And by the way, your cheerleader coach should love this. You know what? If Nick Sirianni doesn't do anything and he allows his guys to talk trash like this throughout the week, I may change my tune on that guy. I, I, I admire the guy who talks trash prior to the game, not after the game. I like the guy that talks shit, writes some checks, and then has to cash him. That's what I like. In my small world, I talked more shit on Oklahoma. And I'm going to post it. Tone, wait till you see this shit. I talked more shit. I said this guy, you guys probably forgot his name, Brian Bosworth. I said he couldn't make our team. This guy's the most overhyped guy in the history of college football. He couldn't make anything. I said that team's overrated. We killed them last year. We're going to kill them again. Headlines in the Miami Herald. Hurricane tackle had... Sooners wondering who he was. Cilio backs his fat mouth up. I wonder if I can bring that up now. I love that kind of stuff. Cilio backs it in the, the headlines. The headlines in the Miami Herald. Cilio backs his big mouth. I got to find this thing here, man. Cilio backs his big mouth. <laughs> Dude, I couldn't believe it. I opened up the newspaper the next day. Jimmy comes walking in, and he shows this to me, and I go, damn, I can't believe that. Yeah, I mean, I, 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 couldn't, I couldn't believe it. It was right there, in the Miami, right there in the front page of the Miami Herald that it says Cilio backs his big mouth up. And I love that kind of stuff. That's the kind of shit that creates great rivalries and really great football games. I really do love it, man. I really do. Mark Farsetta is going to join us at 5.30. Tone will join us as he always does at 3.30 for the segment. That'll be at 3.30. Also, don't forget, today we start up the program for our Hooters gift certificates. And all of you guys out there, all you have to do, um, email us, dancilioshow at gmail.com. Give us your information. Tone's going to throw a code word out. The entire four hours of the program. We're going to do this all the way till Friday. Monday, we'll name those names on a football Monday. All you have to do is identify it, email us, and you get a shot at winning those gift certificates from our great friends at Hooters. 
I, I, I'm really looking forward to this. By the way, you know what I'm going to do here? We're going to have a little fun. We're going to do matchups. Who has the advantage at every position? Hey, you know, and I, I'm, I was going to do this one second, but I want to do it now. Because I think this is an MVP game for Jalen Hurts. I mean, I do. I think, here, here, get this. He can't lose. He can't lose these next two games. He can lose the Giant game. He can lose the Seahawks game. But he can't lose San Francisco and the Dallas game. He can't. Because the national media is going to overlook many aspects of his game. Don't you, hey, don't you think, don't you think that's the problem here when you're talking about Hurts and being the best player in the game? They overlook many portions of his game. Don't you think that's the problem? You know why? Because they're lazy. Most voters are lazy. And they don't do their due diligence. Senor, I'm not saying that. I'm not saying those Bills and Chiefs games weren't it. That's not going to be. I don't think that's going to be enough. No, I do not. And, hey, Senor, you should add the Cowboy game in there. Not just the Chiefs and Bills. You should also add the Dolphin game in there. I would add those other games. I would add the Cowboys, and I would add, hey, no, I'm just telling you. I know how voters are looking right now at Hertz. Let me let me let me make some points here on this. You really think 4,168 yards passing, 28 touchdowns and 15 picks, 94-9. Quarterback rating, 67-6, is MVP conversation. This has been brewing for almost a year now. Oh, I agree. The fact that AJ engages in trash talking shows you how much they hate each other. I'm with you, Prince. I think Hurts is on pace for like 638 in rushing with with 15 touchdowns. So that's going to come out to like over 40 TDs. When you look at his numbers, that's not going to be enough. My question would be, will numbers or the wins be the metric that Hurts is going to be gauged on? It won't be his numbers. It's got to be the wins. Get this, how would you like to be a coach that as soon as you lost, you lost your job and you were undefeated? Jalen Hurts is in a position, and get this, I know the kid doesn't care about the MVP. Dak said it perfectly today. He goes like this, hey, if I'm in the MVP conversation, that means we're playing well. That's what Jalen probably feels the same way, okay? He probably feels the same way. But if Jalen loses, they're not going to put him into the conversation as the number one guy. I think even if he gets home field advantage, I think he has to beat San Francisco and Dallas. Remember I told you four and one. And then I don't know how you deny him. And if he goes undefeated in that stretch from the Kansas City game on, I, I mean, really, I don't know what metric you would take away from him. His numbers aren't, he's got too many turnovers. And now, get this, you'll take the 15 turnovers with 5,000 passing yards, not with 4,100. That's not going to be enough. 638, so he comes out to about 4,700 yards of total offense and 40 TDs. And he comes out with a, let's just say this, 15 and 2 
that probably gets it done. The 15 and two. His numbers are not going to, his numbers are not good enough. You add the winning in, I think that's the thing that puts him over the top. Because if, here, if Patrick Mahomes ends the season 14 and three, and they have home field advantage, and they have one more loss than you, but he throws for 5,000 yards, he's going to get it. He's going to get it because they don't want to give it to Hurts. Debo is a bum. One 5K season in five years. Yeah, Mark, they use him differently, though, in San Francisco than they use AJ in Philly. He's on jet sweeps. He runs the ball. Keon, I think he should, too. I think it's the pelts he's putting on the wall. I'm with you. No. You run through those court. You run through those quarterbacks. I don't know how you deny him. Unless you start looking at his numbers. He's got high turnovers. He's got a bunch of fumbles and he's got a bunch of INTs. And he doesn't have enough statistics, in my opinion. No 30 TD passing, not over 4,500 yards. Now, there's still a ton of season to be played. He could still up these numbers and lower the INTs. The 67-6 is great. But there's 50 guys that have 67-6. The league is set up for completion percentage to be high today. Okay? Not like it was 15, 20 years ago, where if you were 62%, you probably led the NFL in passing because pass completion percentage. Okay? Stats won't win a Super Bowl for Hurts, but moments and wins will. It's a great take. Who's had the most memorable moments this year? That's a great take. Yeah, but Nat, it's a great take. It's a great take. Because I would say Hertz has had the most memorable moments. The Dallas game, the Kansas City comeback, the Bills comeback. Um, yeah. I, I, I would I would give I would. But how much are the voters looking into that? You know, you're starting to get this conversation about Jalen a little bit here. Okay. Um, Yeah, big. Ask me about news on Shaq Leonard. He's visiting the Cowboys today. And he'll visit the Eagles later in the week. That's a good sign. I'd rather visit the team that I potentially want to go to later than earlier. And then you get your... Assessment. Dallas is only going to sell them uh, glitz and glamour. Eagles sell you winning and advancing your career. What do you want? You're a football player, not a movie star. Now, if we're talking about auditions for a movie, you go to Dallas. But if you're talking about winning games and upping your value as a player, there's only one place to go. You know where that is? Philadelphia. The Cowboys devalue their players once you go there. When you go to Philly, your your value of your car increases. I'm I did just I mean if I'm a get this let me just let me just take this off. And I'll get back to this here in a minute, but let me just take that. If you're a football player and you're evaluating going to Dallas or Philly, and you're Shaq Leonard, this is what you look at. Boy, I'll tell you what, man, a lot of eyeballs will be on me in Dallas because they are always on the Cowboys, no question about it. But if I go to Philadelphia, every guy that goes there, that's a free agent and signs with that team. They they end up increasing the value of their of their career and they lengthen their career and they make money and they get raises when either they stay or leave. And that gives me an opportunity to play maybe three, four more years. Last couple of years for Shaq Leonard has been pretty tough for him in injuries. How'd you like to go to a place where? They may ask you just to be a rotation guy. And you can up your value, get to the NFC title game, potentially win it, get to a Super Bowl, and then go in the open market. You think your value's high? I think it'd be high. I think you got to – when you're making comparisons between the Cowboys and you're making comparisons between the Eagles, I would make this comment to you. I mean, you got to determine whether you're looking at being a football player or whether or not you're looking at wanting to wear the star. I wore the star. 
It's a whole different unit, man, compared to playing in Detroit or Tampa. It was a completely different thing when I played for the Cowboys for a year and a half. Completely different. When I was in Dallas, it was different. They looked at you different everywhere you went. And I was just a football player. I didn't give a shit about that stuff. I, I, I probably was in the wrong place, to be candid with you. But Tom Landry was going to go from the flex to a 34. And they wanted nose guards. Danny Noonan and me were going to be the nose guards. And then Jimmy came in. So, I mean, I was like, you know, being a Cowboy is different. Only one year he passed 1K in total yards from scrimmage. Mark, they use him differently. 800 yards receiving, 700 yards receiving, 400 yards there's a reason he's making $20 million. Mark, you could say whatever you want about him. He's not a conventional wideout. That's not how they use him. Ayuk is the conventional wideout there. Okay? So b- back to this. I think Jalen has to win these next two games to win the MVP award. If he wins these next two games... See, everybody in Philadelphia has already crowned him. Nobody in the nation and nobody that votes has. Just remember that. All our shows, IP, Fanatic, Inquirer, are all are all saying he won. He hasn't. He's in the running. But he he's nowhere near winning that thing yet. Is he the lead? I'll tell you, for me at least, he is. Okay? But nationally? I can name 10 voters right now on that panel who have Lamar Jackson ahead of him. Do you know that? I talk to these guys all the time. Do you think Jared Bell has Lamar Jackson? Jared Bell goes to Baltimore Raven practices every day. Or do you think he has Jalen Hurts? The Ravens are the number one seed right now. In the AFC, I believe. One or two. I think it's got to do with the amount of games played. They may have played one more game. I I think. Jared Bell doesn't have Jalen Hurts as the number one guy for the MVP. He's got Lamar Jackson. He he doesn't. The guy, Arkash, up in Chicago has Lamar Jackson. All people north of Philly have Lamar Jackson. New York writers have Lamar. It's a fact. It's irritating, isn't it? This guy said on... His numbers aren't good enough. The wins is where it's at for him. That's going to be the golden nugget here. He loses. They're going to give it to Dak or Lamar. Or maybe Mahomes, depending on Mahomes and how he finishes the year. I don't care what you want to. Hey, don't start throwing stats at me. Because when you look at Jalen's, they're not great. They're, They're okay. They're in the middle of the pack. They're in the middle of the pack. The guy in Houston's got better numbers. Winning is what's separating him. I think there's two things that help him in the MVP. You ready? The winning. There's three. The winning, the QBs he's beating, and the 40 touchdowns potentially. Okay? That's you. Those are... I'm, I am not saying I don't think he should win it. You're getting me wrong here. 10 in one. Absolutely. Absolutely. You see, every voter has a different metric. They do. 
Because you know what they'll say about Jalen? Media needs the MVP vote. Take it from them. I'll tell you what, Ryan. This is what a lot of voters will do. Well, he's on a loaded team. That's why Nick Sirianni. So wait a minute. Didn't you ever wonder why Nick Sirianni's not the front runner for the coach of the year? He's not. He's nowhere near it. Why? Why do you think Nick Sirianni is not in the conversation for the NFL Coach of the Year award? He's in the conversation, but he he will not win that thing. Why do you think that Nick Sirianni's not in and will not win that award? Not that it matters, but why he will never get that. He's on a great team. They're going to give it to guys like D'Amico Ryans or maybe even Shane Steichen for the job they've done with lesser talented rosters. That's how some voters look at the MVP award. If you took, if you took Jalen Hurts off the Eagles, most people think Sirianni's obnoxious tool bag. I love it though. How you know what's funny? How could I be one of the most obnoxious human beings on the planet not like that guy? I'm still trying to fight myself through that. I, I, I really am. Okay, I'm 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 trying to fight myself through that. Again, ask yourself this. If Jalen Hurts was taken off the Eagles team and another functional quarterback was in there, how many wins would you think in a shitty NFC? I think they're a 9-8 and eight team. They're not spectacular. But the NFC sucks. What are they, nine and eight? Maybe eight and nine? Okay, seven and 10. Between seven and 10, eight and nine, nine and eight, somewhere in there. Okay, you're kind of like that. Okay, I say somewhere in there. I think there's too much talent, Joseph, on your team to be anything worse than that. You take Patrick Mahomes off that Kansas City team. They're picking in the top five. You take Josh Allen off that Bills team. They're picking in the top five. That's, again, that's how some voters, that's their metric. Look, I'm not going to tell you what I told you yesterday and then turn around today and tell you I don't think this kid's the MVP. That's not what I'm saying here. And I don't want you to take it that way. I'm telling you, he's got a still an uphill battle. You know what? Just because you think you earned it doesn't mean you're getting it. You know, Tone and all the all the guys, they're not wrong. When Rob, all the all of Seth, everyone, they're not wrong. But they don't give that award to people because they earned it. It's a popularity contest, too, like the Heisman. I miss the old sills where is the hate? Hey, hang on, man. I, I'm, how can you hate 10 and 1? You want me to make something up? I can't do that because that's lying and I'm not a very good liar. Okay? I'm not a very good liar, so I can't just start. See, I can't. Today, I heard. Skip Bayless again, talking about how lucky the Eagles were. And I ser seriously, they should rename that show the ifs, ands, and buts show instead of undisputed. If this happened, he catches this. If that happened, if they were on the same page, if this was that, if that, I was like this. Yeah, but it didn't happen. That's the difference between the Cowboys and the Eagles. The Cowboys don't wish their luck. They make their luck. The Cowboys wish for luck. Never get it. The Eagles make their luck. Okay? They make their luck. Dude. Right? I'm not, I'm not, I wasn't, hey, Greg, I wasn't a movie star. I was 
I was a football player. I wanted to play football. I didn't give a shit about wearing the star. Didn't matter to me. I I, I revered wearing the Lions helmet and the Bucks helmet just as much as I did the Cowboy. It didn't mean any more to me. But when some people get that Cowboy helmet on, can I tell you this, guys? Some people, you should see it. You should see it. When some people put that Cowboy helmet on, they think they're putting a crown on. And you, you would swear they have a crown on their head. And you're going like this. It ain't that big a deal. You had four wins last year. You had one win Jimmy's first year. But with some people, when they put that Dallas Cowboy hat on and they put that lid on, they think they're putting a crown on. Let me say this to you. Jalen Hurts loses one of these two games or both these games coming up with Dallas and San Francisco. He'll be out of the MVP race. He'll be out of the MVP race. He's so close to it right now. Get this. Here, here. Know this. Last year, you guys felt Jalen Hurts because he missed games. Cost him the MVP. Hurts wins these next two. He could take the rest of the year off. As long as they have home field, and he'll win it. He'll win it. Because he'll have numbers to match the record. Then the most important thing, he'll have home field. What more do you want from a quarterback? And by the way, he'll be so close to validating his contract. Jalen is probably this close to validating that contract. Daniel Jones is out here. Kyler Murray is out here. Mahomes is validated his. Josh Allen's out here. Dude, Justin Herbert, Jalen's right here. He's the closest of any of the $40 million quarterbacks. Lamar too. Lamar too. This year. That's the issue. They're looking at hypotheticals with drops and ref call. Dude, that shit's stupid. And talent has aided him. And the most important thing, let me tell you something. Ace, Jalen Hurts uses his talent. Jalen Hurts has a loaded team. But when Jalen Hurts won that game yesterday or a couple days ago without Lane, that shit's off the table for me. Totally. I'll never bring that up again because he can win without. Lane Johnson, would we not agree outside of uh, Jalen Hurts? Lane Johnson is the most important eagle on the team. Would you Would you say that? That's why that win meant so much to me. Would you guys agree with me? Lane Johnson is the second most important eagle. Right? Would you agree? Look at how the team wobbled. Hey, by the way, I went back and watched Jack Driscoll. He got better every quarter. But a lot of his hands full this week. Okay? I don't think Jason Kelsey's the second most important. I think he's probably 2B. 